Hey, this is Chris, and welcome to Coding in Public. Uh, today we've got this image magnifier, and I've done this once before, and I'll link that in the description below. That time I just had it where when you clicked on an image, it just pulled up, and you could click anywhere on the page, and it would go down. I wanted to add a, a few other features to it for a, a production site I'm building, and so I figured I would kind of show you what I've done uh, to change it here. Uh, so you've got a couple things going on here. You've got this little indicator that's there all the time, but at an opacity, and then when you hover over it, it kind of comes up in opacity, and there's this white background overlay kind of thing. And then when you click, now if you click on the image itself, it doesn't do anything, but if you click outside the image, it closes. And uh, so those are two things I wanted to add to this and switched a few things around as well. So if that's of interest to you, stick around and let's jump right in. I've got the basic HTML set up here, and you'll notice a couple of things that I'll point out here. I've just got all these uh, images in a light box uh, or in a grid container. And so that's what we'll be styling to kind of get them in the right place. And then in order to do anything um, like that a before or after state, you can't do that on an image tag because it's called a void. I think it's called a void tag. Void image HTML. What's that called? Void element. Yeah, so it's called a void element. So it can't have a before or after because it's, it doesn't have any closing tag. So in order to have like a before and after state, you actually have to wrap it in a div and let that do the heavy lifting. Um, so that's why I've wrapped all these uh, images inside divs called Lightbox. And then up top here, I've got a div called Lightbox Background. And that will actually be the kind of the grayed out area when we click. This image tag doesn't have a source right now because we're gonna provide the source from whatever image we click. I do have a JavaScript file uh, kind of wired up here. We're gonna spend a lot of our time on CSS today because I think that's actually kind of the more confusing part here. And then we'll jump over and just quickly add in the JavaScript that we need. So let's jump in with this light box background. That's where we're gonna start. We're gonna style it uh, as if it's totally visible right now. And uh, then we'll hide it uh, when we don't need it. So we're gonna do a position fixed. We want this to fill the whole view screen wh wherever it's at. We do want it to be on top of everything else. So we'll do a Z index like 100 or something, way, way above everything else. Uh, next, let's do a background color. And uh, for this background color, we're gonna have a transparency on it. So we'll do RGBA and we'll do a dark color uh, like 130 and with 30% opacity. So if we click, nothing shows up here yet um, because we need to do top zero, bottom zero, right zero and left zero. And you see it shows up right away there. And in fact, if I try to click on anything, there's, I guess there's nothing really clickable here. I think these are links. Uh, you see it's over the top of everything. So next let's go ahead and say, uh, we want to do a few things. We want to say display uh, grid and let's do place items uh, center. Since we just have one image that we're going to be popping up, that's all we need to do for this. Um, in order to make sure it's always in the middle, we also will need to do a height on this. So we'll do a height of 100 view height and a width of 100 view uh, width. Okay, and then before we do anything else, let's come down here and do a light box background. We're going to add a class to this to toggle it on and off. Now, there are a couple different ways we could do this. We could have this set as display none and then hit down here and hit display uh, block or something like that. I think the, the way I prefer to do it is just to put an opacity of zero on it. Now that looks like it's gone, but I actually still can't click on anything. So we also need to do a pointer events of none. So you can't interact with it. You can't click it. And I guess these aren't links. I thought they were, but you can see now my cursor is still changing because it's text. Uh, so essentially it's hidden uh, both in visually and then even as far as clicking on it, which means that when we come down here, we want to make sure that this now becomes opacity one and pointer events of all. Let's also put a transition of uh, all like 200 milliseconds ease in and out. So it'll kind of fade in and out uh, as, as we move it. Okay, I think that's all we need to do there. Let's come down here now and let's give ourselves a little more space. And let's grab that light box background, I think is what I called it, background image. So this is the image that we will populate eventually with uh, the image that we click on, lightbox background image. All right, what we want to do here is we're going to add a few things. We only want it to be at most max width 
of 90 view width and a max height of 90 view height. So that's the maximum it will be as it kind of spreads out in that area. Let's also add a border to it, uh, five pixels solid and do something like EF, EF. So like just barely off white. We'll do a box shadow as well. We'll have zero on the X axis, uh, three pixels on the Y, 12 pixels blur. And then let's do RGBA like, I don't know, 80, 80, 80 and 0.8. So it's kind of hard to visualize right now because um, <laughs> uh, we can't see it at all. But if I do this, you'll actually see there is a little dot there. Um, so far, that's just the border. Um, but eventually, there'll be an image in the middle, and then there'll be kind of a background box shadow behind that. So we've got the light box background and the light box image set. Let's actually work on the light box itself. The light box, you might remember, is this whole area. We need to first make sure that we can kind of layer this out in its own little grid here. So let's come over here and we'll say grid container. And here we're going to do display grid and grid template columns. And then let's repeat. And that way it's automatically kind of auto resizing for us. And we'll do auto fit min max 250 pixels and one fraction. Now what this does is it repeats columns and it tries to fit in as much as it can. It stretches those columns as much as it can. The, the minimum they'll be allowed to be is 250 pixels. And then the maximum is basically take up equal space in the, the entire container. Um, so that's what we want. And that'll be auto responsive basically. Now if we do this, the images aren't quite working right. We'll have to actually do some work on the images themselves. But let's go ahead and do a grid gap of like one rem and a margin of two rem. Okay, so that doesn't look great yet. Uh, let's actually switch around and work on the light box. You might remember light box is what we called this, each of these divs that hold an image. So if we come in here on the light box and do um, a cursor uh, pointer, that'll make sure that when we hover over them, we can click. Let's grab that actual light box image. So light box image, we'll do a width of 100%, which means they're gonna take up the full light box area, a height of 100%. And then we're going to do display block and object fit cover. Now with height and width 100%, if I don't do this object fit cover, then they might stretch a little bit. Um, and we don't want that. So this object fit cover allows for that. Now you see they're, they're laid out nicely in a grid. If I pull down, they're always trying to fit as, you know, stretch as much as they can. And eventually, they'll try to fit all on kind of one line if they can. Now, if you don't want it to be like all four, you could do something here like max width on this grid container, like, I don't know, 800 pixels and margin here would have to be auto. And then it'll only ever looks like three fits there. So that doesn't quite <laughs> look great. Anyhow, let's do something like 600. Yeah, there you go. Um, so they'll only ever go to two, uh, but they don't have a side margin, which means you'd have to provide that somewhere else to, to make sure they're not hugging the side there. But let's remove that. Uh, I think I like it better just kind of stretched out as much as it can. So that's most of the work we need to do on the actual light box and all that. All the hard work comes in adding in that white background and that zoom icon and all that kind of stuff. So again, this image tag is a void element. It can't actually hold any before or after elements. So anything we do like that needs to be on the external container. And so we're going to add both a before element and an after element here. And the before element is going to be that white kind of background. So in order to do that, we're going to grab this light box and we're going to say light box uh, before. And we're going to come down here and say content. You always have to provide a content on these content zero. And we're going to want to position this absolute. Now to keep it to the actual container, the light box, rather than the whole window, we need to come up here and say position relative. If you don't understand position relative and absolute, there are plenty of tutorials on YouTube, um, but just so you know, kind of my reasoning there. Next, we wanna come in here and we're gonna to say top zero, left zero, right zero, and bottom zero. All right, so nothing's happening yet, and that's because we need to add a background color. So we'll come in here, background color, 
and we'll do RGBA. And here we're going to do 255, 255, 255. And right now, just so you can see it, I'll do uh, one for full opacity. And everything's white. Okay, so it's working. Let's come back in here, and we're actually going to set this at zero. And the reason I'm actually putting a background color here is so we can do a transition on it. So let's set that up, transition all, at 250 milliseconds, uh, ease in and out. All right, now when we hover over that light box before, we want to actually do some more things to it. So we're hovering over the light box, so that's where we're going to put the hover uh, selector, I guess you'd call that. Um, and we say when that happens, we actually want to move this background color to something more like 0.2. Three. Let's try that. We come over here, you see it pulls up and it fades in and out. And that's because we've put a background color on this and then a transition. Okay, so that's half the work. Now let's come in here and we're going to do the same thing for this after element. So after, and we're going to grab our content. And we're going to have a background image. URL, and I've got it here, zoomin.svg. This is just a feather icon. If you need something like this, there's a bunch of open source icons on feathericons.com, and I just downloaded it. Uh, so that's where I got the, the icon. Okay, it's an after uh, element. We want to position it once again um, as absolute. This time we're going to say top 50% because we're trying to get it in the middle and left 50%. And I'll show you what that does here in a moment. Uh, we also need to make sure that we give it a width and a height. So let's do width 40 pixels and a height of 40 pixels. And you see it's starting to show up for us. Let's set an opacity on it, 0.3. And that kind of fades it off a little bit. Now you notice even though we put it in the middle, it's actually kind of down and to the, to the right. So let's inspect it and see what's going on. So if you come in here and let's see if I can kind of show it here. This after area, you see how it's the top left corner is in the exact center of the image. That's how it's positioning it. So we actually need to now translate it up and to the left by half of its container, and then I'll set it right in, this, in, in the very center. So if that doesn't make sense, let me show you. Okay, so we're gonna say transform, translate, and here we're gonna do negative 50% and negative 50%. So this top and this left are 50% of the container. Now that we're transforming the actual element itself, we're translating it only by 50% of its own height and width. So if we save this, it should go directly in the middle, and that's what it does. So we got one more thing to do, and that is to add uh, a hover state for our magnification thing. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to, let's just increase the width to like 50 pixels, and we'll increase the height to 50 pixels as well. So when we hover over it, it jumps up like that. And then we also want to change the opacity to uh, like 0.6, something like that. Now, so it's not so rough in the transition. Let's add the same transition we did for the background. And now it floats up just like that. Okay, so that's all the CSS we need to do. Now let's jump over to the JavaScript. For the JavaScript, we want to actually grab a few things. First of all, we're going to say we want to grab that uh, background. So we'll do lightbox background, and we'll do, it's a query selector, and we're going to select, what was it, light box background, I think is what we called that. And then let's do the same thing down here, except this time we call, we'll call the light box image, and that was called light box background image, if I recall. Next, we're going to grab the light boxes themselves, so we'll just call light box says all right and this time we're going to do a query selector all and the selector is just light box so we're going to select all the light boxes we're actually going to go ahead and just do our for each loop right on this variable so we'll say for each light box we want to do a an event listener listener is a click that we're listening for here's what we want to do First of all, let's just console log, clicked it. All right, pull up our console here. Whenever we click, it says clicked it. 
Okay, so it's working so far, but we don't want to do that. <laughs> what we want to do is grab the lightbox background and class list dot add active. So that's the first thing. Whenever we click, it should activate that background. Now, right now, there's no way to deactivate. It. I just have to refresh. So uh, let's now add the source from whatever image we clicked on. We're going to add that as the source for this lightbox image. So the first thing we need to do is we need to find the source that we've clicked on. So let's first of all say uh, console log the lightbox dot query selector image source. So as we come in here, lightbox, lightbox, there we go. What we've done is we said, okay, we're clicking on the div. Let's do a query selector inside that div and find the image tag. And inside the image tag, we want this uh, attribute, the source from it. So now what we need to do is just say lightbox image dot source is equal to lightbox dot query selector, all that stuff <laughs> dot source. Unexpected token, what did I miss? Oh, I forgot to remove that from the console log. So now we come in here and click and that happens just as we'd expect. Because we put a, a height of 100 view width and 100, or 100 view height and 100 view width and told this to be placed item center in that grid, it is exactly in the center, that's what we want. But now we need a way to click off of it. So we're gonna do one more query selector down here. So we'll say lightbox background dot add event listener. And we're listening again for a click. And we're gonna actually pass in an event here. And we're gonna say if, so this is once it's already active, this is the only time you could click on it. If the event dot target, the thing you clicked on, is equal to lightbox background, then we want to remove the active class. Dot class list dot remove active. So now when we click on here, if we click in the middle here, it doesn't do anything, but if we click on the actual light box, it removes that active class. So that's all there is to it. Um, the CSS to me was a little more challenging figuring out kind of how to do this uh, zoom icon. It's not too difficult, but for whatever reason, just mentally, I was trying to figure out how to make that all work. Um, and then once you click, you can update that source of that image that we've already got kind of sitting around lying in wait for us to click. And now uh, we can only remove that when we click outside the image. Hopefully that was a helpful project for you and kind of fun to explore that as a different idea of an image magnifier. I'll put the other one I did as well in the description, but uh, thanks for watching and happy coding.